So we got Magic Max 2 in the Fusion page now with DaVinci Resolve 20.1. So we're gonna go over some Magic Max effects in today's video. This first effect you might be familiar with if you follow Dr. Clips on Instagram. I'm not exactly sure what to call it. Right now, I'm gonna call it the Dr. Clips effect. So I'm working in a vertical mid flow. If you wanna follow along, you can go to Workspace, go to Layout Presets, Fusion Presets, and mid flow vertical. So first, I'm gonna grab a Magic Mask. I have it up here in my toolbar. Then I'm gonna select the subject. So just like Magic Mask 2 in the color page, you just click on the subject and it'll leave these little dots. Now Magic Mask 2 is also very good at isolating parts of the subject. So you're gonna go over here to post multiply image. That way you'll be able to see your subject and then continue making selections. Once you're done with your selection, just go over here and recheck post multiply image. If you want to, you can click on better or you can leave this faster. And then I'm gonna click on better and then track back and forward. If you need to make an adjustment to the edges or anything like that, you can go over here to matte and you can blur the edges, erode, and you can adjust the threshold to smooth out the edges. For this clip though, I have a good selection, so we're gonna continue on. So now we're gonna grab a merge node. We're gonna merge the magic mask over itself. So take the output of the magic mask and connect it to the background, which is the yellow input. And then connect this to the green input and just take the output of the merge one and connect it to the media out. Then grab a transform node, hold shift, and you're gonna place it in between the magic mask and the background input. Again, the background input is the yellow input. So this is what's gonna give us our background image. I'm basically just gonna use keyframes to enlarge it. So go back to the first frame, I'm gonna set a keyframe. I'm gonna go about 10 frames in, enlarge to about, about 1.4. I'm actually gonna go back to the very first frame and then I'm gonna turn it up just a little. Basically gonna create like this little outline. So hold control and zoom in. You can see the secondary subject there. I'm gonna turn it down just a little bit. You basically just want it big enough to create like a kind of an edge, which you'll see more here in a second. So my very first frame is gonna be 1.03. Then go to frame 10. That's when I crank it up to 1.4. Then I probably go about another five, 10 frames in. Basically just kind of want to repeat this. I turn it back down to the 1.03 that I had in the first frame. Then like I said, repeat, so I'm gonna go another 10 frames. I'm gonna set a keyframe there and then go a couple of frames in and enlarge my subject again. So when you're done, you should have like a repeated animation. Mine's is kind of random. You can make it steady or consistent. I just decided to do mine as random. Now I'm gonna click on the transform node, hit control space. I'm gonna look for scan line. Of course, it's gonna be applied to the background subject. Go over here to inspect the tab and turn up the frequency. And then we're gonna get a color corrector node. So type in CC, color corrector. And then we're gonna go to inspect the tab, right click on hue, go to modify width, add them curves. Go to the modifiers tab, change transition to duration. And then we're gonna change this to easing. And then we're gonna change this to five. So that's gonna give you the color shift. Now we're gonna grab a glow node. We're gonna go with the soft glow. Now we need to smooth out our keyframes. So now we're gonna go into the spline tab. You click zoom to fit. And then we're gonna box select our keyframes. Hit S to smooth. Now you don't want to smooth out the ones in between. It's gonna it's gonna mess up the timing in between each transfer or each animation. So you want to select these. Hit smooth. That's gonna keep this flat. That way you have your animation gonna happen. Then flatten it flattens out that curve and then it happens again. Then go over to the settings and then transform. Activate your motion blur and turn it up to ten. So last thing we need to do for this effect is bring in the background. We're gonna grab a merge node. Take the output of the media one, connect it to the background, the merge, then take the output of that merge two and connect it back to the merge one. Make sure you get merge three. And then click on that merge three and hit control T to swap places. Now you have your animation, your magic mask, and your background. I'm not sure if this is how Dr. Clips do it, but that's how I came up with it. So shout out to Dr. Clips. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel if you're not already, turn on post notifications so you know when I upload new content. Let's get back to the video. So the next effect is gonna be a transition. So now we're gonna select our clip, hold Alt, move up to make a copy, select the clip and hit Control D or Command D if you're on Mac. We're gonna select one second, hit change. And we're gonna move the playhead behind that clip and we're gonna split the clip and gonna override it with the back end. And take this top clip and put it over our previous clip, then go into Fusion. I'm gonna skip this part here, I'm just using Magic Mask to cut out the subject. Now while it's tracking, a quick word of advice, if you have a computer with a graphics card or like a NVIDIA graphics card, and you, have this, and you haven't updated your studio drivers, be sure to do that because I updated mine, I think back like Thursday or Friday, and I noticed Magic Mask's performance got a lot better as um, far as the selection process. So quick tip. So now that I have my subject tracked, we're gonna basically create a royal transition, but instead of using a transform node, we're gonna use a DVE node. So hit control and space, type in DVE, up oh, DVE, hold shift and add it to the pipeline. Now real quick, my clip has more than just 24 frames in it, even though I made it one second long and I'm on a 24 FPS timeline. This is actually stock footage from Envato and I had to speed it up because it was already in slow motion. So when I sped it up, it 
added more frames to the what would usually be a one second timeline well one second clip we're on the first frame i'm going to hit keyframe on z move and i'm going to use the x-axis you can use y-axis if you want to and on the x-axis i'm going to type in negative 90 and then the z move i'm just going to move it all the way up then i go to my last frame and then i'm going to hit this little white notch here to reset it on both the on both z move and the x-axis so when you play it back it's basically going to zoom in and flip up then of course we're going to activate the motion blur and then we're going to go into a spline tab and smooth out the motions. Uh, click on your DVE node, check it, and then zoom to fit. Select the keyframes. You're going to right click, go to easing, and we're going to do out cubic. So now back in the edit page, this part here you don't really have to worry about. I got a few little extra frames hanging off, like I said, because I sped up the clip. So right here with the animation in, I'm just going to move that up and then move it back in of the clip up to cut those little extra frames off. Then I'm going to go to my media pool and go to my power bins. Here I got my rapid movement two presets. I'm gonna double click here and I'm just gonna use one of these to actually cap off the, the effect. And grab the adjustment clip. I'm gonna use frame slam one and I'm gonna move it over in between both the roto clip that I made and the background clip. If you wanna check out my rapid movement V2 pack, I'll leave a link up here and in the description. For the next effect, I wanna remove the subject from the footage itself and basically create a, a clean play or a blank canvas. So with the magic mask, I already got the subject track. I'm gonna hit control space and type in object removal. I'm gonna move over here to the, to the side. And then I'm gonna take the output of my media one and connect it to the background, which is the yellow input. Then I'll take the output of my magic mask and connect it to the green input, which is the mask input. Then I'll take the output of the object removal and connect it to my media out. I'm going to go to the inspector tab and select show mask overlay. And I just wanna make sure it's actually selecting, what's showing the selection that I made with the magic mask. Then I'm also go down here and select. Then I'm gonna go to screen mode and change it to background. I'm gonna select. I'm gonna select mask overlay. So now I see that it's actually analyzing the entire background of the clip. So now I'm gonna select scene analysis. And it's basically gonna go through and scan the footage. And once it's done, I'm gonna uncheck the mask, and then go to build clean plate. So there we have a clean plate. We can kind of manipulate the magic mask a little bit to try to refine it. If you come from After Effects, that's pretty much the equivalent of the content awareness field. So if I go back to the Magic Mask and go over here to Matte, I can turn on the blur edges. You can see it's making subtle changes to the edges there. It's nothing perfect, but it is good enough to perform a quick little roto effect. So now we're gonna grab a merge node. We're gonna take the output of our Magic Mask, connect it to the merge, and take the output of our clean plate and connect it to the merge as well. Then take the output of the merge, connect it to the media out. I'm clicking on the merge one and hit control T. That's gonna bring our subject back in. Now we're gonna grab a fast noise, take the output of a fast noise and connect it to the mask input. And your subject should start fading out. And then we're gonna go over here to the inspector tab. We're gonna uncheck lock X and Y. We're gonna turn Y all the way down, turn X all the way up. And so I'm gonna type in 50. And then I'm gonna rotate the angle by 90 degrees. I'm gonna turn up the contrast. And the details is a little bit. Now we need to set keyframes. Actually, first we're gonna grab a camera shake. So hit control space, type in camera, and we're gonna grab the second camera shake. Hold shift. We're gonna add it to the pipeline in between the magic mask and the merge one. We're gonna go to the first, we're gonna go to our first frame. And on the motion scale, we're gonna turn it all the way up. We're also gonna turn up the, we also gonna turn up the pan altitude. Go about 10 to 15 frames in. I'm gonna go, actually, I'm gonna go to frame 14. I'm gonna set a keyframe. And then I'm gonna go to frame 24 and then set this to zero. We also gonna turn up the motion blur on the camera shake and then go back to our fast noise and go to frame 24. On frame 24, we wanna turn this to, I'm gonna type in five and then go all the way back to zero. We're actually gonna turn this to negative two. Go a little bit further back. We can still see a little bit of the subject there. So we're gonna go over here and type in negative three. So basically we want this to fade out where you can't see the subject at all. So we're just gonna type in, we're just gonna type in negative five. So now we're gonna set a keyframe with the first first frame of the clip, which would be negative five, and then at 24, we're gonna crank it all the way up to five. If you used to watch the flash, it's kind of like the little vibrating effect when he will phase through walls almost. <laughs> and that's gonna do it for this video. Make sure to check out the Rapid Movie V2 pack. Link will be in the description, and I'll see you next time.